iOS, it's only sport Martin Devlin locked on war. You were on turn. We're just days away now from the single biggest game, I believe, of sport in New Zealand this year, the Rugby World Cup final. It's us versus the Springboks, a repeat of 1995. Justin Marshall, in my opinion, remains the number one New Zealand rugby analyst. He's here covering it all for Super Sport. Justin, welcome back, mate. Thanks, Dev. Um, yeah, how fascinating, isn't it? Man, the... Uh the way that this tournament has played out and we've got the arch rivals, our old foes, the Springboks in the final. What a fantastic final. Well, it must mean a hell of a lot to you, mate, because, of course, you were an integral part of the first ever historic series win in Africa in 1996. That's when you joined the All Blacks. It was after our defeat in 1995. And to and to have that as one of the first series that you competed in and also everything that it meant to us. Absolutely. And look, I think, you know, possibly if we were to look back and and, and, uh, and, and try and be, I guess, humble about the result in 1995, you, you, you think that probably South Africa really needed to win that particular Rugby World Cup simply because they'd been obviously out of the game with apartheid for such a long time and uh, their reintroduction back into the rugby world um, being one of our historic foes, um, has been sensational since 95 and yeah it was amazing to play them in 96 and uh, get that first ever series win there it, it meant a lot uh, and since that's played out in 95 and, and that series in 96 we've never met the uh, Springboks in the Rugby World Cup final so you know it's, it's amazing isn't it that we've finally eventually got there. Justin, you know, before we actually look at how the nuts and bolts of this particular game, just, you know, I really want to pick your brains about what it means to you as a very proud All Black, you know, playing as many test matches as you did. Did you always consider these guys the biggest foe? I think equally alongside uh, Australia for me, because I spent a lot of my time um, in, in Colts and basically under-19s rugby uh, playing against Australia. We never had World Cups back in that day. So Australia were the one team that we did get an opportunity to play with before you sort of reached the all-black level. And, and that's when I played against, like, against guys like Joe Roth and um, Rod Kafer and George Gregan who ended up all becoming Wallabies as well. So to me, Australia kind of were that one side that um, I knew a lot about and I didn't really... Uh, get educated about South Africa until 1996 when we had that amazing tour there. And I think I learned a lot and we got told a lot by the senior All Blacks in the team at the time about the significance of South African rugby. And that's when I started to really uh, galvanise that rivalry and recognise it. So, yeah, I think probably those two sides are the one, the other teams you want to test yourself against the most. Like, no one likes losing against England, mate. Don't no, get wrong. <laughs> no, of course not. But, you know, you, you look at the, Afri the Africans, and they only came in in 1995. They missed those first two World Cups. So their record since yeah. then of winning three, and now they go for a fourth. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that really motivates them, I believe. Oh, it does. You know, like, honestly, uh, I watched that game last weekend, and it was dramatic. Uh Probably a, a test match that South Africa shouldn't shouldn't have won because they they were slightly off on the day. England's game plan execution for 67 minutes was near on perfect, and you know that that that, that usually is the catalyst for your winning test matches. But I think just what you've basically mentioned, South Africa's history, their ability at Rugby World Cups to get the job done, their ability to win finals and and even reach finals is unrivaled, and I think. That's what good good teams and good nations do. They find a way. When, when, it, when your back's against the wall, you still find a way. And look, I would have preferred to have, uh, us to have played England. We haven't played each other much in the last uh, decade. Uh, I think we've probably only played each other twice. I think once in, at Twickenham um, and then that Rugby World Cup semi-final in the, in the last half a dozen years. So they don't know us as well. They're not as educated about us. But unfortunately, South Africa do. They, they, they know us very, very well. And they know how to beat us. So it's a fantastic final, but equally it's going to be a tough one to win. Now, you know, when you put all that in the melting pot, Justin Marshall with us on the platform, and you and you and you look at the Mount Smart game, and look, we're going to be talking endlessly about this up until Saturday night, I know. Um, and then you add the Twickenham game to that, and you add the past histories, then you add the performances of the teams in these two World Cups. I guess my question is what the hell can we read into any of it going into that final? Well, finals are finals, Marty, and, and basically they're all about execution on the day. And, and, 
you, you don't tend to get um, many opportunities when both teams are playing for such a prestigious uh, title, you know. So I think really you forget about those two performances. Uh, look, like South Africa, a record win against us at Twickenham. Equally, the All Blacks, uh, you know, absolutely dominant and, and wiped the floor of the Springboks at Mount Smart Stadium. So what both teams will do will will be they'll look at both those performances and try and get an idea of why they were so dominant. Uh, in my mind, uh, at Twickenham, South Africa just started really, really well. At Mount Smart, the All Blacks started really, really well and got into their groove nice and early. So both teams will be looking at that. But you know, South, South Africa really hurt us inside our 22. I think we got two two yellow cards or possibly even there was a red in that game. And, and uh it was just all due to pressure. The All Blacks couldn't handle the pressure they put on at line, they put on us at line-out time um, and really uh, basically strangled us out of the game by playing in the right areas. So they'll look at that, I would imagine, and equally the All Blacks' physicality at Mount Smart was next level. Like, they, they went up, I don't know, 20 or 30% from where they'd been in previous test matches, but they couldn't match that at Twickenham. They were off, slightly off. So... That's probably about as much as both sides will take out of those two performances because finals, final um, Rugby World Cup finals are what they are. Yeah, and you go back to '95. I mean, I'm a great believer in history, and I'm a great, you know, I'm, I'm a great student of history as well. And there were no tries in that game. And in Rugby World Cup finals, I know that it blew out in the end in Tokyo. But traditionally, you're not going to score too many tries, are you? So, so what are the crucial elements here for you? Is it scoreboard pressure again, like Ireland? Do we take that same mindset into it, where we just be absolutely ruthless and 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 are pragmatic about the way that we play and and getting the points that are on offer? Yeah, I think so. And, and off the back of what I've just said, you know, in that Twickenham game, South Africa turned down many uh, opportunities to kick for goal and, and went into the 22, but that applied a, applied pressure in a different way. And and they were able to, again, cause those discipline problems again, uh, for us, and we, we eventually just couldn't um, hold on and, and leak the points uh, big time. And, and in fact, a world re- a record yeah, amount of points. Yeah. So. Mm. Yeah, but but Marty, they, they they will look at that game against England, and they did the same. They turned down points, they turned down kicking opportunities in that Test match many times, and they didn't get any change. They all got really well controlled and, and dominated by England. They 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 basically left points out there that could have ultimately cost them that game. Uh, so I think that was when New Zealand was so very very good against Ireland. You know, we we just. We knew that when we were applying pressure, we were doing it in the right areas. We were in zones where we could kick three points. We we're going to reward ourselves for, for putting them under pressure. They're a good side, and they will have their moments. This is Ireland, I mean. And they did, didn't they, Ireland? They got their moments right up until, <laughs> until yeah, after yeah, the final yeah, whistle. Yeah, yeah. And South Africa are exactly the same. They will have their moments in this game, and if we've not taken our points and turned points away, and equally not taken points, uh, opportunities when they've been presented to us by their very resilient defence, because we've we've earned the right, then that's when you get hurt in finals because you're not you don't get too many opportunities. Justin, do you believe that we have timed our run really well in this tournament? Um, you know, we've played a massive game against France. We had three effective training runs. No disrespect to the opponents, I keep saying, but they were. And then we play a massive game against Ireland. Argentina didn't really test us. You know, the other day we were sitting there with Scott McLeod. He said, we've got 33 fit men, 33 fit bodies. We're all just itching to play this particular game. We come in in great shape. I guess that's what I'm saying. We're fresh. We certainly are fresh, and look, I'm, I'm not going to take a backward step because I'm that type. I'm not that type of bloke. I don't get on the bandwagon when everything starts to be turned around and, and feel all rosy about things. I still feel that we've messed around with our team too much. Um, I certainly feel that certain positions um, where players are are in jerseys, they they are just basically in in those jerseys because Ian Foster can't fathom not having them in the side. So that is what it is, regardless of how anybody feels about that. Somehow, somewhere along the track, with all the rotation and all the messing around, plus guys being out of position um, and playing in the wrong jersey, they've found a way to become a very efficient side and, and play some good rugby. And I think a big part of that is absolutely yes, that for all, all the messing around, they are very they are very fresh and unscathed at the moment. They really haven't been anywhere near the well that South Africa have. You know, South Africa have had to come through Ireland, they've had to come through Scotland, they've had to come um, through a very difficult Tongan side, and then obviously they had to beat France and England. Like, think about that. Yeah, <laughs> mate, yeah I know. I mean, it's a hell of a schedule, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, should you? I mean, like, you know, they you are know, a lot, yeah. a lot more better at Bruce than what we are, and I guess that's a massive benefit leading into this game.
You know, just drawing another parallel with 1995, um, we went into that final and all the talk was about Jonah and stopping Jonah. I wonder whether or not the South Africans are going to be thinking about Will Jordan in the same way. This guy's been extraordinary all tournament, hasn't he? He seems to have a try on him every single game. Do you think that they'll be applying special tactics to him? I think they'll be careful. Uh, but what, what Will Jordan won't get is the, the amount of space and time with the way South Africa defend that he has been getting against other sides. I thought we were really clever in the way we got certain players into the game against Ireland because their defence is very much out to in as well. Um, but again, I thought Ireland was just slightly off on the night. They weren't quite as fluid as they usually are. Again, I thought they were a bit fatigued. They'd been through a really tough tour, uh, tournament as well. Um, so, yeah, their line speed was just a little bit off. South Africa's line speed is relentless regardless of how tired they are. So, I don't think they need to over-focus on Will Jordan simply because their defence shuts, shuts the width of the game down. It, it doesn't allow players to have the space they usually get so it'll be about Will Jordan getting his way into the game and in and, and different parts of the field looking for the ball and seeking it because standing out on your wings is not going to not going to work against South Africa so I don't think they'll overly concern themselves about him because their defensive system is, is good enough that it puts that type of player under pressure regardless of, of who he is couple more questions, we'll let you go. We've seen them stop, start, sit down, the water boy come on, tie in the shoelace, the injury breaks, all of that. How do we counter that? Do we get in Wayne Barnes's ear early and just keep saying, come on, come on, get this game going? Or because they are going to try and frustrate us. So what do we do? Well, we can't uh, allow it to annoy us. And, and the minute that you start thinking about something like that before the, 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 you know, the game's even kicked off, I feel that you're already distracted. I think what what we've got to realise is, hey, if they if they're going to tactically um, bring those types of delays into the game, then there's no point in us getting wound up about it because then we're just basically uh, playing into their hands. I think the All Blacks just have to think about what they what rhythm they get in, what they do well. Um, if there are these uh, setbacks and the, the, these time delays, then you've just got to make sure that your messaging and your energy levels stay good. And, and that, like when I say messaging, get together, okay, there's a quick break, right, what have we been doing well? Okay, bang, okay, he's got another couple of minutes and he'll be back on his feet, boom, what are we doing next, you know? I just think they've got to control that and mentally not make it an issue to try and turn it into a positive. Finally, I just kind of think, who are your key players? For me, Aaron Smith is one of them, Bowden Barrett is another, because if we get broken play, Bowden has actually stepped up in this tournament. But this is Aaron Smith's last game for the All Blacks. There'll be a lot of emotion riding around that. I know he can clear his head on that, but I just kind of feel maybe with so few chances that 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 this that deafness of pass, the speed of pass, his ability to look at a gap, and I hope that he starts to even probe and maybe takes a gap himself. I think he's a key player, mate. Do you agree? Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I think he's playing great rugby as well. And and obviously, we know that the All Blacks absolutely thrive off uh, quick ruck speed ball. And when Aaron Smith is on, and he's never off, let's face it, uh, you know, that's, that's how the All Blacks function. Because he's there, he's there quickly, he's got the energy, he's got the clearance. Um, and, and yeah, I agree. Equally, if he can be a little less predictable and, and, and sort of maybe do some unpredictable things, um, like taking steps, like, uh, you know, he's, he's one of the best at recognising the right players to hit inside the 22. You know, use Frizzell, use Savia, don't, make, don't let them pick and go. You know, get out, bounce out a little bit and, and be, a, be an assist passer. Um, he's vital. But for me, mate, the, the, the guy that really needs to step up and needs to play well is Richie Moonga. Like, uh, <laughs> at Twickenham, he got frustrated into not being able to find any rhythm. And, and the Springboks just basically cut the field off and he couldn't function. And he'll need Geordie Barrett, who's playing really well as well, to do some pretty tough carrying um, off his shoulder. But Richie Moonga needs to just give himself time and space and not panic about not being able to sometimes utilise and use the ball. His kicking strategy has to be very good because that defence frustrates you into kicking the ball away unnecessarily. For me, he's the key. If he plays well and he gives himself time and space, and he doesn't get frustrated and panicked into making poor decisions, he, he, he could very well be the biggest influence in the match for the All Blacks. Marshy, there's no better person that I want on Supersport sitting with the, the Saffirs than you, mate. I know you don't take a backward <laughs> step, and you're going to have to prepare well for this yourself. Yeah, certainly will. But, you know, look, uh, they are very much like us. They're like, this is an awesome final. You know, what we, we, we love playing against the All Blacks. We love the All Blacks. We love New Zealand as a nation for the way that it loves its rugby because you're like us. Um, you know, they, they are basically 
so looking forward to this match. It's like the, it's the dream final, and, and that's the, that's what they're calling it. So don't worry, I won't give an inch, but uh, I know they won't as well, and I wouldn't expect them to. Devlin. Yes! Yes! Can they do it? The Platform.